one of these. All right, day two. Let me get set up here a little bit. Day two, HL. Locked in. Composite function. Woo! Does anybody have any memory whatsoever of composite function? Day two, A -A HL two, point five, composition. All right, composition is. To another. Have you ever heard of fog and golf? Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's composition. Um, I don't really like fog and golf. It sounds stupid to me, but if you want to be a fog or golf guy or girl, um, more power to you, I guess. So we've got. Fog is coming back. F and G are going to be functions. We got it. Oh, but it's not quite the same. Obviously, when you're handwriting it, it's just kind of whatever you want it to be. But when you see this on a, when you see this on like a test or whatever, or like when it's printed, it's not an O like this. I think you guys have all seen this before, it floats up in there. And that means to put one function into the other function. If you see it written like this, a lot of times we're going to get parentheses around that, and we're going to get an x that follows. So, if we see fog, when you put one function into another, we have an x, we have a g, who's going into who? Yes. Boom. Always. Second into first. And then you can't really get it wrong, or you could, but it would just be your fault. Always put the second into the first. And fog and golf, like I said, pretty um, pretty strange. I don't really like fog and golf. So what do we say instead of fog and golf? Yes. So we're gonna go with. I don't know if I quite heard it, just finish it in the back. The word of. F of G. So F of G, is that what you said or you say of? Oh. Okay, I couldn't quite tell if you said F O G or F of G. Yeah, we're going with F of G of X. And that means to put the second into the first. You could also see this without our new fancy little circular O looking thing in there. F parentheses G parentheses X parentheses parentheses and I think that this is a much more intuitive way to see it um, as a student I would think that this would be the nicer way and I really think it helps if you see this G of X as a little smaller G of X right maybe like even smaller oh I'll do that now it really seems obvious that we are putting the G into the F, just because we made it shrunk it down a little bit. But we're still pretty good with this, right? I'm going way too slow for you know really you know. So let's do some problems. F of X is equal to five X plus three and G of Let's figure out what is f of g of x. Mm -hmm. 
All right, who's going into who? Nice job, G goes into F, so we're gonna be taking G, this part, and it's gonna be going into the X, which is that part. This is a part where I might be having a little bit of a guy who used to teach algebra freshman issues here, but I wanna be very specific and make sure we get that in there in the correct way. Um, this is F. And the G needs to go into the F. And once it goes in there, it's basically going to get rid of the X. Well, that's a bigger reason than I thought. It's going to get rid of the X, kind of leave behind that gap where the X used to be, and then G is going to come into that position. But I'm sure that's super easy, right? We got that. Nice. At this point, we just need to make it look a little bit better. Sometimes that's easy, sometimes that's a huge pain. For this question, it's very easy. What is the best way, the best way to write f of g of x? What do you got? Polynomial form. Negative 10 x plus 3. We good? Super easy. Never miss this. Nice job. Let's Move it up to the top. Let's select. This is just genius. Nice. All right. Um, we already did f of g. Guess what's coming next? Now, big question: Is this going to be the same thing? F of g and g of f are they the same? Figure out, I guess. The big one is G, and the F is going into the G. So here's the G, negative 2X. We're going to take the X, we're going to make it big parentheses so we can fit the F inside of there. And now, a little bit more distributing than we did last time. What is the best way to write G of F of X? Negative 10x minus 6. Make sure you have that minus there because we are distributing a negative 2. Is that the exact same thing we had before? No, which means the second one goes into the first or were they wrong? We go that? Sweet. All of this. So, so easy. So, so easy. Guess what's coming next? No. No, it's still doing composition. What could go next? We already put F into G, G into F. What, what, what else can we do? Are we all out of options? We can do F of F. That is insane. Not really. Just put the F into the F, and I'm going to go much faster because, you know, don't want to do it on slow. Put the F into the F. Simplify that. 25x plus 15 plus 3. Too slow. 18. Is it? 25x plus 18. And so the last one, g of g of x. I'll write it like this this time. So we get a little bit of experience there. Boom. What's the answer? this harder if you have a very hard you know IB question on this we could do something silly like we could do f of f of f if we could do a whole bunch of like functions and functions and functions but that's just monotonous that's not hard that's just annoying the way we could make it more difficult is if we change f and g and we made f and g more difficult so I'm gonna commit to myself that I'm gonna write small Already out of space. So let's do h of x, k of x. Let's make these at least a little bit more difficult. h of x, x squared minus x, and k of x would be 2x minus 1.
Okay, so let's start knocking them out. Let's do uh, at least two up here on this first page. The first one we can do, let's just do the OGs. Let's just do, let's just do H of K of X. Give you a little bit of time to do this on your own. How long do you need to do two questions like this? Three minutes? All right. Three minute timer is going. If you get stuck, raise your hand and we'll do it. Or we'll talk about it. Might give you a hint. So what happened? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you did. Uh, you didn't tell the second guy. Yes, I heard it from people. Yes, of course, the classic mistake. We got a double X coming with letter H here, function H. And so when we put K into H, we got to put K, this bit here, into the first X squared, but also into the second X. And it is a next, so we got all kinds of problems with first. So hopefully you didn't get what I got. If you did, no problem, but shame on you. Now, this one should be x squared minus x, and then k is going in there, 2x minus 1, 2x minus 1. Now, does that look better? Yes. Okay, now we need to square that, 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. We need to do this, and we got to make sure we got this negative distributed properly minus 2x plus 1. Final answer, I'm going with 4x squared minus 6x plus 2. Thoughts? Better? Mm -hmm. Nice. And I like seeing Grady's approval. That'll do for now, I guess. Um, then we got k of h. How does that one look? That one's like, honestly, we should not be missing the ones where we only plug in to 1x. That one should be pretty easy. I got that one right, right? We're good? Okay, what is left? What else are we going to do? Yes, let's do the, uh, the doubles there. Let's zoom out a little bit. Um, just moving stuff around. Dang, I'm in one of those moves. Oh. Yeah. You guys know what I'm talking about. You guys know what I'm doing. Yeah. Here we go. Let's do uh, H of H. H of H of X, which means put H into H, which means H has two X's. X squared minus X. Inside there is another X squared minus X. X squared minus X. Definitely ramping up the difficulty here. We are in big X country, that's for sure. Square it, that's looking like x power 4 minus 2x power 3, and then that should be good, add negative x and negative x, positive x squared, minus x squared plus x. Do we foil it? Certainly. Certainly we can combine these two things together. They're both x squared. We have a plus x squared and a minus x squared. And so, as far as I'm concerned, oh, that was the worst. There we go. Is that going away? Much better. Go with that answer. Composition, how's that? Okay. Okay. What about what if I ask you for H of H of negative three? Who's gonna do that? That needs to go into the x's, right? I mean, at, at some point, and this is where you get a lot, of, a 
a lot of freedom, right? It's up to you. You can wait a long time to put that negative three in. Like right here, we already have h of h of x. So if we want to get this three in there, then we can just plug in the negative three and have negative three power four minus two negative three power three plus negative three. Looking at 81 negative 27 times negative two positive 54 minus three Plugging in those negative threes. Now you can also do this in a different order. Uh, I'm just gonna get rid of this k of k of x because it's just a waste of our time. Let's say that you didn't already have h of h of x figured out and you wanted to figure out h of h of negative 3, you could start here and try to figure out what is h of negative 3. That's going to be x squared minus x with a negative 3 with a negative 3. You can figure that out. That's going to be 9 minus minus 3 plus 3. So that's going to be 12. So h of negative 3 is equal to 12. Now you can take that 12 and you can put it in here because this whole thing, that h of negative 3, is 12. So now, step number 2, you can just plug in 12 to h and you can get So two different ways you can do it. You can go the mega algebra and put the h into the h and then second put the number in there. Or you can kind of work inside out, right? You can start by putting the 12 into the h and then get that number and then put that number into the h again. So if you were crazy or cursed or something like that, somebody could give you some crazy question that was like h of k of h of h of zero and that just looks like a nightmare for algebra but really it's not hard it's just annoying because you could just start right here and do that part and get a number and then put that in this part and then do that and get a number and then put that into k and get a number and then put that it's not hard it's just annoying um i think we're okay uh the other thing Opposite functions has to do with. Okay, I guess we'll do one more. One more little bit. Are we out of room on the whole thing? Okay, let's reclaim some of this space here. Let's go for. Oh, we missed some of it, but that's all right. Okay, we've talked about this when we talked about homework a little bit. Teacher from staff, please pardon the interruption. I have an important announcement. Please listen carefully. Ooh. Again, I have an important announcement. Please listen carefully. Any students who ride bus 212 or who live in Broadlawn to bring their belongings and report. 
first two seniors I name. Any students who ride by 212 or who live in Broadlawn should bring their belongings and report to senior dining at this time. Thank you. We good? Everybody ride 212 live in Broadlawn? Okay. Um, we talked about this with homework. Or we, we went over the question that we didn't do on the homework about inverse numbers. So let's look at that just for a second longer and then we'll incorporate something. So, what is the L inverse of 1 when we're in backwards world? What's the number? 5. Five. Everybody comfortable with that? Because the y value of 1 leads us to the x value of 5. Cool. Um, what about the n inverse of 6? This one's almost even easier because, of course, we can't really get it wrong. There's only one 6 on there, which leads us to the 2. Nice job. We could also do the process we looked at before and set up some chains. So we could do the L of the N. And now, we always want to start with that innermost piece, right? If we can figure out this piece, maybe shrink it down a bit so it looks a little bit smaller, that'll help our brain out. If we can figure out that piece, then we can take that piece and bring it to the L, and we can kind of finish our chain. So does anybody know what M of 5 is? 1. You're correct. M of 5 is 1. Um, there you go. M of 5 is 1. And so now, we already did the M part. All we have left is L of 1. What is the L of 1? A of 2. Not very difficult at all. We just need to make sure we work from the inside out. Focus on that inner piece and work your way out. Um, what about the M of the L inverse of Five, maybe just keep it to yourself for a second. I'll give you, I think a minute might even be too long, but I'll give you just a little bit of time. We got an answer? What do we got? Six, you said? The whole thing is six because the inverse of L of five would be two, and then we're gonna take that two over to M, and we're gonna deal with this two, which is gonna give us six as the answer. All good, we gotta do this. Sweet, I think we're done. Um, composite functions, they really aren't that bad. The, the one thing is mind your negatives and make sure for functions like h, where we have that double x, that you get them into both x's. Don't be like the guy who got it wrong on the board.